From a strange habit of being resurrected in movies, to questioning the importance of female characters in the movie industry. There are a couple of reasons why Michelle Rodriguez decided to skip Avatar The Way of Water. She explained her reasons for sitting the sequel out in a recent interview. It's quite simple, really. The actress, whose name has long been attached to one of Hollywood's biggest franchises, just didn't think it was a good idea. In the first Avatar movie, Rodriguez played Trudy Chacon, an ace pilot who flies the human friends of Jake Sully and Atiri around Pandora. The reality, of course, is that she's part of the human's air force on Pandora, who she winds up betraying on the mission where they destroy the home tree, and later fights in the final battle of the movie. She ultimately sacrifices her life to save them. Michelle liked that ending for her character, so she was surprised that James Cameron offered to reverse it. In the interview, she described a meeting with Cameron, who suggested that Michelle could be one of the many returning characters in the sequel. Rodriguez just wasn't having it, though. Trudy's sacrifice in Avatar was an important moment for her character. She basically died a martyr. To undo that somehow in the way of water would cheapen that moment. But that isn't the only reason why Michelle wasn't on board with Cameron's ideas. She also says that her returning would be overkill. The actress pointed out a coincidence that, frankly, I'd never noticed. Michelle's no stranger to seeing her characters resurrected. Remember her role in one of Hollywood's biggest franchises? Well, you might not remember this, but Letty actually died in Fast and Furious, the fourth movie in that series. She was blown up alongside her car in a pretty dramatic betrayal that established the villain. When Fast Five pulled up to the curb, though, it turned out Letty had survived, though she was suffering from amnesia. A common side effect of being blown up, you know. But that wasn't the only time she came back from the dead, and she also did it for Resident Evil. In the first movie, she plays second protagonist to Mila Jovovich, but ends up being turned into a zombie. That's usually a death sentence in this franchise. But she returned as a pair of clones in the penultimate chapter, Resident Evil Retribution. We're not done yet, though. Rodriguez also played a taco truck lady and rebel leader in Machete, a movie spun out of a joke in the Grindhouse double feature. She's given the Mo Green treatment, being shot through the eye and left for dead. In a very quick turnaround, though, she was resurrected in the same freaking movie. A fourth resurrection in her career really would be overkill. The actress wondered if this wasn't a symptom of a larger problem. She admitted to feeling like Hollywood doesn't know what to do with her. The constant resurrections have made her feel like screenwriters don't know how to handle female characters. According to her, the female lead of a movie is only worth keeping around if she has a boyfriend. If she doesn't, that leaves the writers feeling stumped. Should they keep her around or should they kill her? It's true that for a lot of Michelle's career, this has been a bit of a problem in the movie industry. And when you look at the Avatar movies in particular, this becomes a little too apparent. James Cameron was talking about getting the gang back together for The Way of Water, but they didn't bring everyone around for the sequel. From the female characters, the only returning member of the cast was Natiri, who happens to be married to the main character. These days, though, you probably shouldn't tar the entire industry with the same brush. So, who ended up returning for the Avatar sequel? Here's a rundown of everything you need to know about The Way of Water. The new Avatar flick splashed into theaters over a decade after its predecessor. And likewise in the movie itself, it's been a decade since the events of the last movie. Those pesky humans have returned to Pandora and are trying to turn it into a new home for themselves. And to help deal with Jake Sully, they've resurrected his old friend Quaritch with an Avatar. Since Jake has a wife and kids, he goes into hiding among the Metakaina people of Pandora. Even after all the time that has passed between the first Avatar and the second, a lot of the cast ended up returning. You've got Sam Worthington and Zoe Saldana reprising their roles, as well as Stephen Lang playing a motion-captured version of his character. 
Joel David Moore and Dalip Rao also make cameos as the human allies of Jake and Natiri. Even Sigourney Weaver is here, though she's playing a different character. The one actress who didn't return to the movie, as we've seen, was Michelle Rodriguez, who has made quite a career out of taking on more unique genre roles. But if you want to see her on the big screen, you can catch her in theaters now in the Dungeons & Dragons movie. That's right, she's making a play for the hearts of nerds everywhere by doing a D&D movie. Well, that's not actually an accurate description of her role. Titled Honor Among Thieves, the movie takes place in the D&D universe without really emphasizing the tabletop aspect of it. It stars Michelle as Holga Kilgore. Lives to fight foes and everyone else. The best friend of Chris Pine's Edgen Darvis. After Edgen's wife is killed, Holga helps him raise his child, while also partnering up with him for a life of crime. Unfortunately, their careers as thieves don't pan out, and the two end up in prison together. Two years later, the pair takes an opportunity to break out of prison. Once on the outside, Edgen resolves to steal the Tablet of Reawakening, which was the thing that got him and Holga arrested in the first place. This time, though, they assemble a different crew to help them out. Considering what Michelle said in this interview, I think a big part of the appeal of this character for her was that she's not just a love interest. Edgen and Holga really are just great friends, and while they do anything for each other, that doesn't mean they have to be romantic, too. I just hope that this movie doesn't also involve her getting resurrected. That said, the film seems to be doing pretty well. It's getting much better reviews than you might think, whether you're a D&D fan or not. I'm sure you were skeptical about the idea of a comedic adventure movie set in this universe. You can set that skepticism aside, though, as Honor Among Thieves has got critics raving. Over on the Spoiled Fruit Movie Review site, the flick is sitting at a whopping 91% critic approval rating. Meanwhile, their audience score tops that with a 93% approval rating. Their critic consensus states that Honor Among Thieves is an infectiously good-spirited comedy with a solid emotional core. As for the audience, they agree that the movie entertainingly blends action, fantasy, and comedy all while respecting the source material. A lot of these reviews compare this movie to the media juggernaut that is the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. In many ways, Marvel Studios have basically perfected the formula of a high-stakes adventure that deftly balances comedy with emotion. Being compared to them means that your movie could be worth billions of dollars at the box office. Who turned down a compliment like that, eh? That's all I've got for you today about Michelle Rodriguez's rejection of an Avatar The Way of Water return. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.